Hello everyone. Hello, hello. Hello guys. How are you guys doing today? Are you excited? We're going to have a very special live today. Hello, hello. We have a special guest today. She's here. <laughs> hello, hello. How are you guys doing? Hello. Hello, guys. So, I'm going to add special guest right now just a second hello steve hello guys hello 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 jennifer oh it's okay now wait can you hear me yeah Okay. <laughs> can you hear me? Yes, we just froze for a second. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I can hear you well. So, how are you doing today? Doing good. It's Monday, but it's a good Monday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's an honor for me to be here with you today. It's a, like a pleasure, a huge well, pleasure. No, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. I feel honored. And I bet in like five, ten years, you're going to have somebody interview you saying, I used your videos ten years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I hope yeah. so. You do. You have a wonderfully warm, enthusiastic following here, so it will just keep growing. <laughs> yeah, my followers are great. I love everybody here. <laughs> They're awesome. So, today I'm going to interview you. Uh, we have 36 questions. I'll do my best. I'm sure there are going to be more questions there in the comments, but I'll let, you, sure. choose. I'll let you choose whatever you want to ask. <laughs> there are many questions. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try. We'll do our best, right? <laughs> yes, our best. So, can I start? Uh, shoot. <laughs> okay, guys, so uh, people were still joining. Hi, everyone. I'm trying to wave here but it's it's difficult <laughs> so hi everybody so my first question is can you sing uh and, and then he adds i consider jennifer to be a great singer is that true you, where did you hear me sing <laughs> unless you're confusing me with someone else no <laughs> yeah it was it was uh philippe philippe is the the guy who asks that. I love to sing very much. I do enjoy it, but I do not claim to have a good singing voice. I don't. Um, I like to sing in the car when I'm driving alone. Um, I would not torture any of my viewers by singing in a video. <laughs> <laughs> so no i'm so my, sure you my are gifts a great lie singer. elsewhere my gifts lie elsewhere but not in singing if, if it, we talk music um i play the piano i can't say like i'm great but i can carry a tune so i feel much more confident playing the piano than i do singing <laughs> that was his second question do you play oh. any musical instrument yes yeah. yeah. and you play the piano i saw you playing the piano yes yes on I, youtube yeah, and I've right. done a little bit here on, on Instagram, too, when I feel like it and I'm willing to record. I get nervous playing for people, um, but I do enjoy playing the piano, and I can play a little bit on the accordion. <laughs> oh, that's hard. Yeah. I know it's yeah. hard. Yeah. <laughs> so, Felipe, she doesn't sing. She, play, she does play the piano. <laughs> that's amazing. Okay. And also the accordion. Yes. Next question. Have you ever been to Brazil? No, I haven't. But do you know, I have so many Brazilian friends and acquaintances. I live in Boston, outside of Boston, Massachusetts. And there is a Surrounded huge by Brazilians. Brazilian yeah. community here. The first yeah. school that I worked at 
um, was run by a wonderful Brazilian woman, and a lot of the staff were Brazilian. And I would hear Portuguese all the time. And I finally said, could I have some lessons just a little because <laughs> I want to understand what people are saying. So, uh, do you yeah. speak any Portuguese? Un poco. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome! <laughs> Eu não falo português. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, you do. No, I, I know enough to say now. that. <laughs> so, anyways, yes, I have Brazilian friends, um, Brazilian acquaintances, Brazilian co-workers. Um, I really should learn more Portuguese because there's a strong community here in Massachusetts. But it is so hard, Ray. Yeah, when they find out you're an English teacher, everybody wants to speak English with you. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. It's true. Okay, moving on now. Okay, it's, it's still about Brazil. Okay. What is the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the word Brazil? My students, Flavia and Andrea. <laughs> Oh, Flavia um, and Andre. Yes, and all my friends um, that I have from Brazil. I actually have more friends from Sao Paulo, um, maybe one or two from Rio, but yeah. And I think of food. Oh, the food is amazing. We do have some Brazilian restaurants up here. And I must say that as soon as I tasted Brazilian food, I, I was in love with the cuisine. Wonderful food. I love it, especially the brigadeiros. <laughs> Oh, yeah. They're great. Yes. I love brigadeiros as well. I think of warm people. And the funny thing is, um, of all the cultures that I've had contact with, I've had more contact with Russians. And it wasn't until I was working in the school that I started to understand why Russians and Brazilians were forming friends and relate friendships, relationships. And you would think that they're very different. But what they have in common is this warmth, this energy i mean when you get to know russians they are warm they do have energy and it's like that was the common the common thread and um it, it's really fun it's so, so I cool. when i think of brazilians i think of warmth and energy and friendliness and good food <laughs> yeah it's true and someone saying you're soccer, soccer. no i <laughs> know soccer. food yeah. good people beaches <laughs> it's and true. My, all my students from brazil for sure she's from boston the Boston yes, area. Yeah. Yes, yes. Teacher Fabi. So Jennifer, great. Mm -hmm. uh, number four now. Why did you decide to become a teacher? That's a good question for both of us. Can you give a uh, 20 second answer? Because I love it. You have to do what you love. There's my short answer. I just knew. Mine um, too? When I stood <laughs> up in too. front of the classroom, <laughs> I just realized that's where I wanted to be. I, I felt good. And I felt energetic and I felt this is what I want to do. This is how I can help people to, I may not know everything, but what I know, I think I can explain to people. And I get really excited sharing what I know, what I understand. And I love the creative aspect of teaching. I love building my knowledge. I love the creative outlet, especially online. And um, I, I do it because I love it. And because I think it's the best profession that allows me to use um, some of my best skills, like I love, I am very organized and very detail oriented, but I love to be creative. Um, I do like working with people. I'm not necessarily a people person, like I'm actually introverted and quite shy at times. But when I work with students, I do, I, I am an extroverted introvert. So I love to be with people and students. Um, in that role with, with my teacher's hat on. If, if I take my teacher's hat off, I can be very quiet and shy. <laughs> So. <laughs> me too. Me too. Yeah. No, I love teaching as well. Yeah. But uh, I guess if I if I were not a teacher, I guess mm. I'd be an actor. Ah, uh, yeah, I thought about I'd that. Be you an know, actor. I wouldn't do films and movies. I would do commercials. I wanted to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? We act when we yeah. teach. Yeah, we're always acting. It's performance. It's, performance. Yes, for sure. We are acting now. <laughs> yeah, but I do like to write. So in another, maybe if in, in the future or in a parallel dimension, I am a writer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. writing is also great. I also mm -hmm. like to write. Guys, I cannot answer all the questions, <laughs> but I'm reading, okay? I'm reading. Thank you, guys. Thank you. So um, number five. Thank you, Larissa. Did, 
Do you teach private classes? Yes, I How do. How can I hire you? <laughs> you go to my website. Um, I do have a very limited number of available times when I give private lessons. Um, so I've been teaching private lessons since 2009. And it's, I love doing, there's so many things that I do online, probably too much because I love it all. But I, te I teach privately. I've been teaching since 2009 because there's one thing to create videos, but I really love working. I love delivering live instruction with a student because I'm accountable. I want to see the results. I want to know that I'm having an impact. I love designing lessons for a specific student. Um, so I love private teaching. I do um, have bookings through my website, but a forewarning is that I'm booked <laughs> through September. Um, maybe I'll add times in October. What but platforms do you use? I will tell you the alternative because one, I, okay. I can't accept all the requests for private lessons. And I know, um, let's speak honestly about money, that it, that is one of the best ways to study, but it's not the most affordable way for everybody. So then you need yeah. to start thinking about group learning. Um, you know, there are free public videos and live streams. Hollow is what I've been using because it's an affordable way for me to offer group learning. How do you spell that? H-A-L-L-O. So that's okay. why I advertise it, because I think it's the best um, alternative right now for me uh, to get people together, give live instruction, answer questions, meet their requests. I do meet regularly with my subscriber group on Holo. So if you download it and find me in the long list of teachers, I think there's only like one or two Jennifers, so you should be able to <laughs> find me. Um, and then join the subscriber group. It's very affordable, and I think it's a great alternative to private lessons. Yeah, so guys, if you want to have classes with Jennifer, Hollow, yeah. it's here. Okay, That's what you can do. There. It's hollow.com. Yeah. Or no, Hol oh, no or Hollow it's, TV. It's an app. It's an app. Go to uh -huh. your app store or what, what, what's the Android equivalent? Play? <laughs> Google Play. <laughs> yeah, Google Play. <laughs> sure. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't use um, The other alternative so is um, YouTube. Um, again, because you know we do our videos for the world, we try to give as much as possible, Ivan and I, but we also try to find how do we deliver more um, and have that more hands-on experience. So another thing I do is on YouTube is I do have levels of membership and the highest level of membership does give you a private Skype call each month. It's shorter, but again, it's for somebody who says, oh, I just, really? when they say, Jennifer, can, you, can I call you? Can we, can we talk? To do that? Well, this is the problem. It's like I, I answer comments every single day. I try across Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Hello, I'm there. <laughs> There's a lot, plus emails, guys. But people say, can I please talk with you? And I'm like, well, then I have my private lessons. I have my live streams. I do not have much time for chit chat and free phone calls. But what I can do, is if you are a YouTube member at the highest level, I will schedule a private call and we can talk for 15 or 20 minutes each month. So that's what I do. <laughs> I don't think we remember that, but we did exchange emails in 2010. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Long I do ago. reply. I do reply. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We did. We yeah. did. English with was... Jennifer. Yes. So I was remembering here the the video that uh, I used a lot with my students was a video that uh, you played with toys, like there was a butterfly, and you explained the difference between it with and without an apostrophe. Oh my gosh, that must have been a long that? one. <laughs> <laughs> my kids must have been very young. A lot for my beginners. Oh yeah. boy! Yeah, yeah. Was, I, I don't I don't remember 2010 or 2009. I guess I started YouTube 2007, and my son was two. My daughter was just a baby. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you haven't changed a bit. Oh yeah. well, I have a little more sleep now, but. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, I haven't changed it a bit. No. So, Jennifer, okay, okay. moving on. Now, um, how many languages do you speak? <laughs> and then the person said, do you speak Portuguese? You already said that you speak no. Portuguese. No. You know what I like to do in different languages is just to get a little taste. So you could say things in different languages of like, I'm sorry, I don't speak this. I'm sorry, I don't speak mm -hmm. that. You know, so that's what I try to say in different languages, like, you know, Japanese, 
Portuguese, French. Thank you. An invitation. Ah, okay, great. <laughs> Back. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what happened. It just went poop. It happens. Technology. It happens. Yeah, but so to answer the question, um, I feel comfortable speaking Russian. Um, I studied French. If you take the time and read my biography on my website, the short version is that I studied French in <laughs> high school um, and actually middle school, and I was like this really dedicated student, did everything, but um, I couldn't speak after six years of studying. And that was one of the key things that pushed me to think, how are you supposed to learn a language? Because if I did everything I was supposed to do, everything they asked me to do, and I still couldn't understand, and I still couldn't have a conversation, just even the basics, um, then something went wrong. And that's why, um, yeah, I decided to become a language teacher. And I learned just a teeny bit of Portuguese at the school that I worked at because I just wanted to understand, like, oh, they're talking about the schedule. Oh, they're talking about students. Oh, they're talking about the weekend. I just wanted to know what are they talking about. <laughs> yeah. So, and um, Japanese, I took a couple years. Again, two years of Japanese is actually very, very little. But um I have a basic understanding of how the language works, which helps me again as a teacher. And more recently, I had this little project where I had to memorize some Chinese phrases and oh my gosh. Oh, that's hard. Mandarin, and it was, it was a real test. <laughs> yeah, because they use a different kind of tone. Well, it's the tone, yeah, so it's yeah, not even it's the writing, it's, it's the tone. Oh no. Yeah. Oh yeah. So. Yes, but. So. Okay. okay. <laughs> so someone was asking what I said in Portuguese. Guys, I was answering a, a question in Portuguese. Okay, so the guy oh, you know what? asked in Portuguese and then I answered in Portuguese. Sorry. Um, somebody asked us earlier about LGBTQ and um, I wanted to say another thing, two things. One, oh, okay. I, on my YouTube channel, again, I have my memberships and the middle level um, which is quite affordable. Um, I have bonus videos and I have these little mini lessons I give each week. I do explain the LGBTQ community, what it stands for. Um, but the quick question, this is very interesting, pronouns. Um, you know, when we talk about people- I didn't see this question. Somebody asked, how do you use pronouns with LGBTQ? I saw okay. that. Um, I only learned this this year that some people use the plural there, like if they're transgender, like someone is transitioning, you can actually use the plural, not a he, not a she, but a they and a there. My, t my children had to teach me that. I'm like, oh, interesting. Okay. I didn't know that. Now I know. Yeah. How old are they? 13 and 15. Oh, yeah. Teenagers. They teach me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. I can imagine. My kids also teach me a lot. And I, I have a special child, so... Um, six, no, no, seven. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> I'm scared. What, do you, what is your opinion about grammar? Do you uh, think, uh, no, do you like it or do you think it's boring? Mm -mm. No, it depends who's <laughs> teaching it and who wrote the book. <laughs> um, you have to know if you watch me on YouTube, I love grammar. I decided not to focus on grammar here on Instagram, um, but on YouTube, I love grammar. I do teach it. Um, I'm a big believer that grammar gives the structure. It's the foundation. But I also believe that all of the skills are connected. So when you study grammar, you are getting um, listening, speaking, reading, and writing. Um, so when someone says, I want to be good at conversation. It's not just speak, speak, speak. What are you speaking with? How are you putting your words together? If you want to improve your pronunciation, if you actually understand the basics of grammar, that will influence your mastery of pronunciation. Because again, you know how words are put together. I, I do like love grammar. it. I do love I it. I like yeah. grammar. Just be a little Many creative. Many teachers say, no, grammar is horrible. It's a monster. <laughs> I don't you... think so. I like grammar. And I know the idea of either some, some learners, some teachers, that you don't have to pay attention to it. I think there's a time and a place. In conversation, you can't be thinking too much about grammar. The goal is communication. That's true. Sure. But if you are making a repetitive mistake and you're studying with a teacher, the teacher is going to point out and say, look, you're dropping all the articles. And or exactly. your subject verb agreement might cause 
misunderstandings. And then you have to practice a little and fix those subject verb agreement mistakes so that you have more accurate speaking. Same thing in your writing. If you make up, if you make repetitive mistakes, you have to learn what to fix. So grammar can be your friend. Um, you don't have sure. to fear it. it. You can also hopefully find a teacher like Ivan, hopefully me, mm -hmm. and we will try to make grammar as interesting um, as possible and as meaningful as possible. Because I, I see a lot of students that are really fluent in English, mm -hmm. but they make a lot of mistakes. Like, it's okay to make mistakes, but if you repeat the mistakes all the time, you know, all mm -hmm. the time you are making the same mistakes. So it's time to fix something. Mm -hmm. It is. And again, what are your goals? If it's just, you know, casual conversation, if you have understanding listeners, it's fine. But if you're talking about performing at a high level, if you're entering the professional world, you got it. Mean, I work with private students. A lot of them are here in the U.S. and they do have to work alongside and compete against native speakers. They're going for a high level of accuracy. So we do need to clean up those little mistakes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Johnny, you don't need to use the past <laughs> perfect that much. You don't. <laughs> we avoid it a lot. Just use the simple yeah. past. <laughs> uh, okay, so you like grammar. I also like grammar, and we are happy with that. We um, Jennifer, do you teach kids? That's I another have question. In the past. Guys. My followers ask those questions. Mm -hmm. I'm open to new experiences. Like, even as like about a year or so ago, someone asked me to teach their child. I'm like, okay. So we tried that. But my specialty is not children. I'm always, I'm comfortable with kids. I've worked with kids in many different ways ever since I was a teenager, like babysitting, volunteering camps, whatnot. So I do enjoy working with children. Um, but I would say my, my specialty really is adult education. Um, but I first started teaching English in Russia, first as a private student, and I was hired for kids and businessmen. And then when I went into a school setting, I actually had three groups every day, kids, teens, adults. So I did work with school age kids as well. Yeah, yeah. So the other question, very similar, is, uh, how can I teach my child? It depends on the age. Right. I'm sure you'd say yeah. the same thing. I mean, if, if it's at, at the early um, in the early years, you're singing um, and even with your not so great voice, <laughs> I sang to my children all the time, um, you know, nursery rhymes, read, 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 read to them. They need to get used to the language. They will not understand everything, but read to them. Let them Use hear the cartoons. You can, but that's, I mean, that's not, you're being, you're not being involved in that. But if you want to talk about your involvement, then read to them, play games with them, even just playing a little fun game um, and, and saying it in English, like whose turn, your turn, my turn, go up oh, yeah. my turn. Let's count one, great. two, three. I mean, all of the basics can come from just simple, simple interaction. So playing with them as they get older, um, then and that you'll have to choose other strategies, but. Yeah, uh, so that video that I was talking about, the one that you had the butterfly, uh, <laughs> that one was made for adults, but yes. you could use the same yeah. video to teach kids, why not? I did experiment several years back when my kids were much younger. We made a little series called Kid to Kid English and I got them on camera with me and I really did want them to help me deliver some lessons to not little children, but school age kids, seven, eight, nine, ten, around there. And I thought it would be interesting for those kids learning to see other children on camera um, talking to them. So we, yeah, we do have a small collection great. of kid to kid English. Uh, my native <laughs> language is English, guys. I'm American. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, moving on now. Uh, do you have a podcast? Do I have a podcast? No. <laughs> That's the question. <laughs> no. I'm just reading um, the question. No, um, but I am on YouTube. I released you a full you video. You a podcast. Let me tell you, because people are like, where are you? <laughs> I'm on YouTube. I release a video every Thursday. That's the big one. Then for members, I have a mini lesson on YouTube every Tuesday. On Instagram, little clips every Monday. On Hollow, live streams right now, Wednesday and Friday. And then private lessons, seven days a week. 
<laughs> so, Jesus Christ. And yes, I have. I mean, I've also had the pleasure of writing um, books. I, I also contribute to platforms for publishers. So I do a lot of content creation as well. So if, if, to go back to the grammar question, I also had my dream come true when I got the invitation to be on a writing team for a grammar textbook series. So yes, I love grammar. <laughs> you worked for Pearson. I did. I, I published um, with Pearson, vocabulary and grammar. Yes. Yeah, I saw yeah. that. Yeah. So, cool. So uh, the other, um, how do I learn English fast? <laughs> yeah, don't. <laughs> Ivan will tell you. Possible to like learn that. English fast. You did it in nine months, right, Ivan? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Six months. Oh, why did it take so long? <laughs> <laughs> no, guys, seriously. Impossible. I mean, there is no shortcut to learning any language. Anybody who says, watch this series, you'll be fluent in, in six months. Mm, it's not true. <laughs> so you can become functional conversational in a rather short amount of time. But fluency and the ability to participate in many different conversations or function in a broad range of, of situations, that takes time. There are private, I've had people study with me for years because they are shooting for the top. They are shooting for fluency and full functionality across the board, professionally, personally, um, so that takes years. I'd say, um, you know, you can become an intermediate, a solid intermediate student within two years. You can do that. Um, you can do w quite a lot within three to four years. Be, be pro I mean, with the right resources, regular study, regular practice, feedback, ideally from teachers, you can do that. But high level of fluency, this comes from years. And I have um, people who are highly educated, amazingly uh, talented people who, who are part of my um, group of private students. They've been studying for years, but no, they thanks. function, they can read, they can write, they deliver speeches, presentations, um, they publish, but it takes a lot to keep it up, not just to reach it, but to keep it up. And I think that the fluency sometimes is something that can be a bit uh, subjective. Mm -hmm. For example, you can be fluent. What is fluent? <laughs> Yeah, what is fluent? <laughs> I don't know if I'm, if uh, uh, we totally talk about fluent, yeah. law. Yeah, I won't be fluent. Yeah, because I don't know anything about law. I don't yeah. know. I don't know much about science. So mm -hmm. it really depends. So yeah, what is fluency? <laughs> I, I hesitate when people say, "Are you fluent in Russian?" I mean, oh, if, if certain casual conversations, I can probably convince you that I'm pretty good. But other situations, I'm like, bluh, 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 I, can't, I can't even. I haven't. I don't exactly. practice. And it, I don't speak it every day anymore. So I, I would hesitate when I think about where your English is and where my Russian is right now versus where it used to be. It's just, you need to practice too. You don't just reach it exactly. and then you're there. You reach it and you, you keep it up. So exactly. exactly. No shortcuts. English gets rusty. Yeah. Any, lang any skill does that. Any skill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So number 12 now, where do you live? <laughs> I'm from Pennsylvania and I live in Massachusetts, USA, East Coast. <laughs> yeah, you don't have the Bostonian accent. Yeah, Boston. Yeah. <laughs> Wicked. Yeah. I yeah, try to, yeah, know. I do try hard to have a standard American, um, st standard American you English do, in terms you of do grammar. That. Sometimes I slip standard. into, pretty standard. You'll hear some things, you're like, what, where are you from? I say, I'm from Western Pennsylvania. You're like, oh. <laughs> That's right. So. Can you say something Hi, in Russian? Okay, ладно. Некоторые хотят, чтобы я что-то говорила. Я могу говорить, но просто я не говорю каждый день, поэтому я бы хотела продолжать, продолжать сейчас по-английски. Спасибо. Yeah, you said that you were having a lot of fun today, that you were enjoying this live a lot. Wow, yeah. <laughs> People say my name is a Russian name. Yeah, I, I do. When I saw Ivan, I'm like, I wonder if he's Ivan or Ivan. It's a, okay. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's Russian. So no, I, I say Ivan, but you can say Ivan, Ivan, you, you choose. Because you guys have so, that's the other thing. When you say, what do you think about when I think about Brazil? I think of diversity. Vodka. Brazil is so diverse. It's yes, so it of, is. And there are actually a lot of people who have Russian sounding names like Natalia you know, or Ivan. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Are you a teacher trainer? I have done teacher training. When I worked at a school, um, I eventually took over the teacher training program for a couple of years. So I put people through teacher training. I had the pleasure of certifying people who are out there now. Um, I participate in conferences. There is, for any teacher who doesn't know, I like to promote the professional association that I belong to, which is TESOL. Um, and TESOL. That's great because you're not only on social media. <laughs> you, I think you are a real teacher. The difference is, guys, um, you, you really, we need to keep up our skills as teachers, and we don't have much time. I, I feel like I, I pretty much work seven days a week. Where does the professional development come? I do learn from teaching, but I need to be aware of the research, the trends, what are other people doing. So once a year, I go to an annual conference. It's an international conference, and that's my professional development. And for several days, I attend different different sessions, I learn, and I've also had the pleasure of presenting too. So it's a lot of give and take. So if you are a teacher and you are, have never been to a conference, I really encourage you to try um, a professional association. Here in the U.S., the primary one is TESOL. And if you think, wow, but I can't afford planes and conferences and whatnot, really look into it. They have grants for people, yeah. for international. You can find help to attend these professional conferences because professional development and connections are very important parts of our professional growth. You need it. Next one here, number 15. Have you ever lived abroad? Yeah. Yes, yes, I did. Um, I visited um, some different countries, but the only country I ever lived in long term was Russia. I went there to um, I first I actually the first went my very, very first trip was um, way back when it was the Soviet Union. I got to see it in this, um, 1989. Then I visited a couple more times. I worked in a Russian orphanage, and then I worked and um, studied. I wanted to finish up my degree in Russian studies, and then I started teaching English. Then I switched to teaching Whoa. English, um, and I lived there for about five years. Yeah, that, that's cool. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. And your kids were born here. In Russia. Oh, yes. Okay. No, no, no. Here, fully American. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay so uh the other here number 16 um how long does it take to master a language i think we answered that yeah yeah you need at least so, a couple years just to get to the intermediate level and then it's a lifelong pursuit towards fluency <laughs> yeah but the person who asked that was uh, a teacher so he knows <laughs> Do you know? You're, you, you are fluent. And then we all have to work. Even I feel like after 20 some years of teaching, I'm still learning things like about grammar, vocabulary. I had a student teach me a word because he was, submitted a writing. And I'm like, what? I had to go to the dictionary to see what that word was. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> so so uh, the other 18. Um, I live in Italy. Mm -hmm. she, should an English teacher speak Italian and English in the classroom? I mean, mix the languages in the classroom. So that's what the person is asking about. Uh, that could be a whole session on that conversation, on yeah. that topic. But I'll Use just say, um, L1, L1 in the classroom. If you're in an institution, and I have been in the situation where they forbid you to use it, you have to make a choice, you know, it, it's, it's their school, their rules, you follow it. So I was in a situation where they told me, don't even let them know that you speak Russian. So I had to pretend like I didn't know Russian. Um, I was young, maybe I would have fought it now, but at, at that point in time, it's like, you want a job, you want a school, that's what you do, you follow the policies. I don't think it's a sin to use the L1. I think it can be a tool. We want to use all the possible tools available. The goal is not to make students dependent on translations. So if you give an occasional translation here and there, I think it's fine. For lower level students, they may need the grammar explained. They may, um, when you're talking about pronunciation, if they're not able to listen, repeat, if you're modeling and practicing and it's still not coming through, a quick explanation in the first language might clarify things. So I think it's an option and it should be an option. You just want to limit the use and make sure the balance is always towards English, the target language. But my personal feeling at this point in my life and career is that it is okay to bring the L1 in. You just have to control how you're doing it and how much you're doing it. Exactly, exactly. I agree with you, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. Uh, 
No, okay. Uh, what do you like to do in your free time? In my free time, um, play the piano, read, take walks. <laughs> yeah. <That's> Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you want to go back? Is this a quick lit? Someone's saying, why would it take two years, six months? It could. It depends on the person, how much you invest. Um, I'm just thinking university study. Goodness, when I started Russian and, and Japanese, I mean, we studied every single day, every single day for a few hours plus homework. Now, if you are a full-time student and you can dedicate several hours a day, you can make more progress. The majority of people learning online are doing something else in their lives, and they only have a little bit of time each day. So it depends where you are and how much you're able, able to invest. That is a factor. Depends on the students, for yeah. sure. So, um, <laughs> to speak so clear in real life, I can understand 100% of what she says, of what you say, the person saying. Yay. I, I do believe in speaking clearly. Um, I don't yeah. always, but I, I think, again, some people, you, you should follow different teachers, study with different teachers, so you train your ears to hear different accents, different speaking styles. He uses some idioms, I use others, so that's all good. But the I other agree. thing, my personal feeling, people, I, I know I've gotten the feedback of you speak too slow, you, nobody speaks as clearly as you do in real life. I'm like, well, as a teacher, I am your bridge. I've said this before. If you want fast speech, you can turn on the TV, you can watch a movie, you can exactly. turn this. You, want, you come to me for help with English, so let me build the bridge. I want you to get to the point where you don't need to watch me anymore. If you understand everything, and th that is my ultimate goal. I love people who stay with me for a long time, but as a teacher, I'm not trying to hold you back. I want to build the bridge so that you can go and explore that big world <laughs> of English out there. So I do speak carefully in a lot of my videos. I do speak extra articulately, especially when I'm teaching grammar because I want everything yeah. to be understood. So I feel that a teacher, especially at certain key times, really should speak as clearly as possible. Yeah, I, I do speak slow or yeah. clear because yeah. I want to be a good communicator. As a teacher, I think it's important to be a good communicator. Like, I don't have to speak fast. People think mm -hmm. that if you speak fast, people are going to think you're fluent in English. But it's just the opposite. Agreed. You can yeah, make you more mistakes. Speak, well, sure. Yeah, you have to speak slower. So then everybody's going to understand you. That's what I think. That's what I believe that works. So you speak slower and then everybody understands you. You don't need to speak so fast. Bah, bah, bah. Machine gun. You don't need that. <laughs> and if you listen to clear good speak like good speakers clear speakers they are not rushing so fast if you listen to yeah, any of the recordings of former president obama who many people turn to as a clear model he doesn't rush yeah. through his sentences he's very exactly. clear and precise and it's nice to listen to a very good model yeah so i agree uh okay number 21 now what did you do if you're not a teacher <laughs> what do you oh, what would I do yeah what would you do if you were not a teacher right I think I might write um yeah. yeah I'd love to write more like creatively um there's also part I have this little plan and dream I don't know if it'll come true or not like when I retire well I don't know if I'll ever will retire part of me thinks I'll just teach until I'm a hundred but um I also like to play the piano I'm not great but I play like sort of and I don't like to perform for people sitting just watching me. I like to play in the background. So possibly for minimum wage, not for a lot of money, I would be the kind of person who sits in a restaurant while everyone's eating and chatting and I'm just going to play. And I'm oh, going to that's be, cool. yeah, I just want to be the pianist in the background or like on a cruise ship. Someone's just sitting there in the lobby playing the piano. That's what, yeah. do, you, do you have plans to, uh, to live in Boston for the rest of your life? No, I don't think so. Um, no. I'm, I'm from Pennsylvania. I want to I travel a bit more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so maybe I will. Hey, my, yeah, I, my, my kids, um, they're, they're the center of my life right now. So I, I want to be here for them. But when they go off and start their lives, um, maybe that will be a time for me to travel, teaching English and traveling. I, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, great. So, uh, what's your advice for beginners? A step by step of how to learn English. Oh boy. Um, go to YouTube, <laughs> English with Jennifer. There's a playlist, one through 65, learn English with Jennifer. If the Jennifer. person knows zero English. <laughs> learn English okay. with Jennifer. It's hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> one, two, three, ABCs. We go from the beginning. And then lesson 66 is with Flavia and Andrea, who do know some English. And that's why we start a bit higher. Um, and I you know, want to address, it's something I didn't give a whole lot of thought to. When we turned on the camera, I just started teaching. I didn't think too much about it. Um, <laughs> I know there's like some criticism of like some videos don't say fine things. No one says fine things. Actually, I think people still do say fine things. Like, how are you doing? Fine things. <laughs> it's okay. not, I don't know. I, it's an accept. It's one of I many possible answers. I don't say fine videos. things. I'm like, yes, people say fine things. Nice to meet you. People say nice to meet you. It's like, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay, okay. I saw these videos uh, with uh, two Natasha. Brazilian girls, right? Oh, that, that, that's basic. That's at level six. Lesson 66 is basic. That's like A2. But if you're talking A1, it's learn English. And my student is Natasha, who we started ah, from Natasha. zero. Yes. Ah, okay. Russian. Great. Yeah. Uh, okay, so guys, go to her <laughs> YouTube channel, okay? That's what you have to do if you are a beginner. Number 33, no, 23, sorry, guys, 23. <laughs> uh, what is your biggest dream? My biggest dream? Oh, gosh. Uh, that's hard. Just my, it's not a dream, it's just the wish of just like to, to live a full healthy life into old age and to continue learning so that I just pray that I have my full physical and mental health into my late years so that I can um, explore as many things as possible. That's what I really hope. I think I'll always do some form of teaching, um, but I, I just hope and pray that I will have my physical and mental health to do that into my 70s, 80s and beyond. I could be English with Jennifer at 99. Happy ah, That's going to be amazing. <laughs> God's going to help you. I'm so sure. Yeah, so. Yeah, Thank you. going to help you. Uh, 24. What makes a good teacher? Oh, goodness. Um, let me just type in. So, th uh, 13 oh, okay, and 15, sure. by the way. Somebody asked how old my kids are. 13 and 15. My biggest dream is also to see my kids um, mm -hmm. live to adulthood and be happy healthy, productive people in society. Would you like to have grandchildren? Yes, of course. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, so what, what does it take to be a good teacher? Yeah, well, uh, the person said, uh, what makes a good teacher? Oh, yeah, the same. Okay, short answer. Um, knowledge, passion, willingness to learn, willingness to admit the mistakes and grow from them. That's it. Yeah, um, But sure. the longer answer is commitment. there's... Commitment. There's... Um, knowing the subject and then there's the skills of teaching the subject and that was something for me to discover at the at what you guys would call university we call college to realize that all these amazing professors some of them they're all amazing they have amazing amounts of knowledge but not all of them were good teachers and i got so frustrated yeah. in certain classes thinking what's wrong i'm so stupid i can't learn and i really it took me time to say you know what it's just they're not explaining it well. <laughs> they're just not teaching it well. So there are some professors who know the content. They know their subject. They're experts. But not, not all gifted. of them are teachers. <laughs> the, no. <laughs> And that's, that's the sad part. So it's having the content and having the skills to deliver. That's the content. Um, but then having the, the commitment, passion, creativity to see it through. Yeah. 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 So, uh, 25 now. I don't want to learn English anymore because <laughs> I'm shy and my teacher corrects me all the time. Please help me. <laughs> I wonder if you, yeah, you need to politely tell your teacher to back off. <laughs> <laughs> politely. Politely. <laughs> Um, and by my, my latest video, How can you I, do it politely? <laughs> I, I practice that skill of like, what do you say to a friend? Like, just back off. But you can't say that. You'd have to say, you know what? I really appreciate that you correct me. And I know I make a lot of mistakes. But um, when you correct me all the time, 
I get very nervous and scared and I don't want to try anymore. So could you allow me to speak for a period of time? Just let me speak. And then you can tell me what some of my mistakes are because if you correct me all the time, I can't think and I get too nervous. Something like that. So, (laughs) because you are actually, you should be. I hate it. You need to be able to tell that to your teacher. I really believe this goes back to the other question. What makes a good teacher is communication with the student. Are you aware of how your student feels? Are you open to their feedback? Are you open to their criticism? Um, Is the door open to have these honest conversations of what you're doing right and what you're not doing so well? Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Somebody's saying something. (laughs) You understand? People were allowed to talk. We have to talk. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah, you have to talk. You pay for that. (laughs) But you also pay for corrections. You know, it's just, it's it's, it's a balance of the teacher trying to figure out when do you give her the corrections and when do you just allow for that production? You know, what I personally do, I correct my students by the end of the class. I take notes and correct them by the end of the class. I guess it's better. I mean, it works for me. Yeah. Or if in a group conversation, like when I do hollow, I might wait till the person's done speaking and then say something, but let them finish their thought. Yeah, yeah for sure. So 26 now. I've been studying English for 30 years, mm-hmm. but I feel stuck at the intermediate level. What can I do? That's Immerse hard. yourself. 30, 30. It's not 13. 30. It tells me that your and study this person, habits. Sorry. Yeah. I'm so sorry. This person lives in the U.S., in New Jersey. A couple of things. Um, I think, one, I wonder what your social interaction is like. Are you living in a community that is mostly whatever, Chinese speaking, Portuguese speaking, Russian speaking? Are you going outside of that community and using English? Or is your English only limited to when you go to the grocery store, the pharmacy? You need to put yourself in situations where you have to interact in English. If you're in the U.S., you're in a wonderful situation. There is English all around you, and you can do it for free. Go to the library and ask the librarian. I need a book. I need an easy book. Can you help me? You know, what books do you like? Have a conversation with the librarian. They'll love it, <laughs> you know, um, or join a, 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 a club, an activity, a, like not, um, not like a yoga class where everyone's quiet, but I'm saying just find some kind of situation that puts you in contact with other people outside your usual social circle so that you have interaction in English. The second thing, it tells me that your study habits probably haven't varied much. Maybe you're choosing using the same resources all the time, or you have good resources and you don't know what quite to do with them. So you could ask advice from Ivan um, or myself at Ohala live stream, and I'll tell you what you can be doing with different resources. How can you get the most out of a TED talk? How can you get the most out of a movie? What should you be doing with these resources? Not just passive listening, but how can you be an active listener, right? It's, It's sad, isn't it? Yeah. It's very sad. We're at the high intermediate to advanced level, which means we're pulling a lot of authentic material into our lessons. The average private student is reading something that is authentic and not, it's not graded reading. So a lot of lesson plans are based on news articles, podcasts, TED Talks, and I pull the grammar and the vocabulary from there. For me, if I have a question about grammar, or pronunciation. I go to my textbooks for reference. I might look on Google too, but I still go back to my textbooks for reference. But I don't teach from textbooks. No. Yeah. You see, guys, this is why Jennifer is an awesome teacher. <laughs> she personalizes the lessons. You know, it's, it's amazing. But this is something I, I to say well. for all the teachers out there, and you think, why are their private lessons are so expensive? Well, there's a whole discussion on that. But guys, even the classroom teachers, it, there's a lot that goes on outside of that time, the preparation, the correction, if there's homework. So there's a lot that we do around a single lesson. And that's why we have a certain fee for our private lessons. Yeah. And Rick, I agree with you. <laughs> Correct me if you're doing Speaking practice should not have any. To a certain extent. And then it's how you yeah. build it. So again, a private lesson, students might deliver a summary to me. I wait till they're done. 
When they're done, I might mention grammar, vocabulary, pronunciation issues that came up, and I might give them a second chance, or their homework might be to deliver that same summary through a recording. Um, they also, we have discussions through interaction. Again, I might be taking notes as we're having this conversation. And then finally, when there's a pause or at the end of the lesson, then I give my feedback. Um, things that I caught in terms of grammar, vocabulary, whatnot, because you want the fluency, but you're also paying us to give feedback. We listen to the yeah. grammar, the vocabulary, the pronunciation, and that's what I aim to give. Okay, so now uh, I have two questions from the same person. The person at first asks, uh, what are the top five idioms, the most common ones in your area, in Boston, I guess, <laughs> and what idioms uh, people no longer say? Oh. I, I hear a lot about uh, it's raining cats and dogs. They might, you know, some people still might use that. I mean, like, but yeah. who would use it? Maybe um, like the weather channel reporters might just say, boy, it is really cats and dogs out here. But in mm -hmm. casual conversation, we don't say that as so it's much. Pouring. It's pouring. It's down. pouring. It's pouring. It's, it's like pouring down buckets out there, something yeah. like that. It's just, it's heavy. If there's a heavy rain or it's raining the, hard. And the top five. I am. I'm not Google, so I can't just speak about Google. <laughs> no, <I'm, laughs> but the, the top five you, you use. You speak. Well, let me just say in Boston, um, they use "wicked" a lot. It's not an idiom, but it's just uh, a, a phrase. They use "wicked" a lot for very extremely. Like it's "wicked hot," "wicked good," "wicked everything." Um, you say "I'm down for it." I don't. I you also. That's why you have to speak with different people because yeah. um, some of it is also. It could be gender. And it could also yeah. be gen generational and things that younger people say, I don't. So there are things that um, I personally don't say I'm down for it. To me, that's very youthful. And I'm, I'm over 40. <laughs> <laughs> so it just doesn't sit with me. It just, it doesn't um, fit my personality. So I'm down with that. Okay. Maybe, uh, yeah. But I don't know. I'm getting old. <laughs> But there's <laughs> funny things, like certain words I say that my children don't say. Um, I say, I still use the word cheesy. Like, oh gosh, that's so cheesy. cheesy. That's a cheesy commercial. I my say kids, that too. But my kids don't use cheesy. They'll use cringy. That's so cringy. Yeah. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. So there's yes. certain words like that. look younger. So. I say that they don't say. They say, no one says that anymore. I say, I say it. <laughs> cheesy. Super cheesy. common. Cheesy. Yeah. Wicked. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, uh, what is more important, qualifications or experience? Talking For about a teacher, yeah. Um, a mixture of both. <laughs> But um, you have to decide what's important for you. Ultimately, it's what you're being delivered and how the teacher is helping you. Um, there are people who are, don't have all the full qualifications, but they're very gifted um, teaching and they're very good at explaining um, things. Um, and I already talked about college professors that I had had and said that, you know, they have all these wonderful qualifications, but they weren't great in the classroom actually teaching yeah. me what they know. So you really ideally want the teacher who has the knowledge and the skills, whether that's reflected both, in the actual sure. qualifications. So I have full respect for people who do have PhDs after their names. I mean, it takes a lot of effort <laughs> and investment to reach that. I do not have a PhD. My highest degree is a master's. Um, but I think you need to look at what the person is investing. So me personally, I don't have a PhD. Um, my master's is in Russian studies, but I got certified originally to teach Russian um, at the school level in Pennsylvania. Then I got recertified to teach English. And as I said, my, pers my personal commitment is to go to these annual conferences to continue my professional development. Um, because I know that I don't know everything and I need to also be aware of how our profession is growing and changing. So I'm some, so you have to choose, okay, Jennifer doesn't have a PhD. So you don't want to study with me because you want someone with a PhD. Okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> it doesn't but, make sense. but maybe, maybe it makes a bit of a difference to know that I am invested in my professional development. Um, and, you know, personally for me, writing those textbooks, especially the grammar ones, that for me was like, a college education. It was like another degree because I got to write with people who were more experienced. It's really hard to say. Um, I do like Betty Azar. She inspired me, me be because I also found out that her degree was not in ESL as well. And I thought, well, see, somebody can do it. Like she had the ability to explain what she knew. She delivered it. And 
she maybe doesn't have, I don't think to my knowledge she has a PhD, but she's amazing. And she helps so many people through her publications. Yeah. And I thought, so it's, it's finding a balance. I don't want to take away from, from the wonderful gift of formal education. And I do have full respect for those who have attained advanced degrees in our field. But I don't think that should be the ultimate deciding factor on who you're going to study with, because that would exclude me. <laughs> and I, I would not want to be cut out of the world of ESL because I don't have a PhD. Um, so... <laughs> You are my idea of a perfect teacher. No, there's no perfect. There's, <laughs> you are. There, there is a perfect teacher perhaps for you individually. You know, you have to find who it is. Um, I, I also taught, I had colleagues who um, had very little experience, um, did not have all the great qualifications, but they were amazing in the ESL classroom. They were good teachers. Um, and I have also taught plenty of, I've, I've taught with um, plenty of non-native speaking teachers and seen them in action and know how good they are. So that's another misconception I always try to erase at every opportunity is oh. please do not have it in your head that you should only study with native speakers. That is yeah. a falsehood. It's, it's not I've a good thing. You have to be able to study with different people, and you also have to train your ears to study to hear different things. But Betty Azar, and then she partnered up with Stacy Hagen, a good colleague of mine. So it's oh, really? Azar Hagen. Azar Hagen now is the series, and they've continued their series. It's good for self study. It's just very formulaic. Yeah. It's it's very clear. The I charts have the whole are collection simple. Here. I'll, it's simple. It's good reference. It's for good yeah. reference. It's nice. But it's not the ideal book for teachers. Te I mean, it's, it's good at a certain level. But for teachers who need to get into the nitty gritty, there are other books that you turn to. But for students, I highly yeah. recommend the Azar Me Hagen too. series. Yeah. So we are running out of time. Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> what question are we on? <laughs> um, the 31, oh. like it would be about phrasal verbs. Do I really need them? Yes, English with Jennifer, <laughs> phrasal verb challenge. Go, in go Russian, you, you know, in Russia, the teaching is very teacher-centered. The teacher is only focused on grammar. What's your opinion about it? Then it's up to you to balance it. Come online and study with Ivan, study with me and find the balance. But I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing because you're building the foundation. I've worked with a lot of students who came from Russia and what they all have in common is a strong foundation. You just then need to build on that and build up your conversation skills. You can start doing that now through independent study and online. So just you, it's up to you to complement that. For sure. How can I improve my writing? Right. <laughs> right yeah, and get right. right. How right. can I improve my speaking? By speaking. <laughs> by writing, by writing. My but with feedback. Ideally with feedback. But again, just practice. Go onto the comments. Type comments every day. Um, read other people's comments. Learn from those who are commenting regularly. If you see interesting words and structures in other people's comments, um, learn them. Ask Ivan about them. Um, and, and then ideally, if you can, get feedback because um, if yeah. you really want to work on your writing, that's when you get private lessons or a course of some sort and you write and you get feedback, the teacher feedback. Super important. I, I do that with students. Yeah. There's just one more. Yes. How can I speak perfect American English? I don't speak perfect American English. What is perfect American English? <laughs> what is perfect? <laughs> what is perfect? Uh, good or, or natural American English. Well, then immerse yourself, um, you know, listen, um, speak, uh, read, don't count out reading. Everybody who wants to be a great conversationalist, reading is going to give you something to talk about, but reading also gives you the vocabulary and the grammar too. Nobody needs perfection. <laughs> I make English mistakes. English is a tool for communication. Okay? I've made mistakes in my videos. I'm like, what did I just say? Well, okay, you know, you just... I make mistakes a lot, too, especially <laughs> when I'm, I'm nervous. I make mistakes. It's okay. It's okay. No problem. It yeah. is. <laughs> so, Jennifer, I guess <laughs> that's it. We're finished. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to have you here. You are amazing. You've always yes. been an inspiration for me. Thank so, you. thank you so much. I could never imagine that I, I'd be talking to you someday. So, 
you inspire yeah. me and I'm sure you're inspiring others right now. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. Okay, amazing. guys. Thank you. Take care, everybody. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.